But Peyton Manning and the Bucks, the Bucks were up until late in the fourth. That was the Monday night game, right? Monday night game. Well, I was part of that game. Of that game. <laughs> I was there. Yeah, I had a uh, 62-yard block at the end of the game, and I missed a 60-yarder by like a centimeter. You yeah. know when you don't catch it clean? It was going straight as an arrow, but I didn't catch it clean. So I was like, man, I don't think it's going to get there. And it like missed by centimeters. But yeah, yeah no, I remember that. Yeah. That was Dungy's return to Tampa. Yep. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah. yeah, so you never know. <laughs> I argue this all the time, and I hope I'm not asking a question you're going to get mad at, but you get mad at me on a regular basis. Dungy or Gruden? Whose team? Because oh, we, we argue that all the time, Oh, two. Well, <laughs> yeah, Dungy built the character and the integrity of the team, and Gruden put us over the top. We just needed a little bit more offense, and he did that for us. So you've got to give credit to both of them because Dungy built the culture, and we we weren't able to get we we weren't able to get through Philadelphia, and then Gruden comes in, sparks that offense, and we win the Super Bowl. So Gruden would not have won the Super Bowl without Dungy's team, and Dungy prepared us to win the Super Bowl. So it's a combination of both. What uh, political office are you running for next? <laughs> oh, man, I know both of them. I mean, they, they, I know. I know. I know. And you're but right. Dungy, uh, as a coach, I always you know, going to put Dungy as the, the the man that molds everybody to be better people better men you know that's like I was saying earlier he wanted us to be great people in the community and do community stuff I didn't know how to do charity work till I got to Tampa because in college you don't have time and now you know we went from school to practice so it was like a constant you know cycle that you just didn't have time when I got here I said well you have to do these events do those events and that's how you learn how to give back Tony Dungy's first charity event as head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was my charity event it was the Michael Bolton softball game at Al Lang Stadium I, that was the very first thing he did. I think that stuff goes so unnoticed, man, because you have it some does. coaches, and, like, I've been in organizations where the coaches just kind of, like, football, business, and then just done with it. The coaches who take time to build a relationship with players, like, you leave such a lasting impact, especially as a, a rookie or a young guy, and they can pour into you and be like, hey, it's important to go do this. Hey, how's your family doing? Hey, how's this doing? Just those couple of minutes, right. it means so much. Like, it means so much to guys, and it's it's um, it's sad when I see coaches kind of just turn that part off, and it's just because now – I don't. I don't have the same. You can say what you want. Guys play harder for guys who they care about and they love. Right. It's subconscious. You know what I mean? Like it's something you just can't control. And so it's like it's cool when you hear that about coaches. Well, that's what you guys used to say about Tony. Is that you know you felt like you were letting your dad down. Right. Yeah. You know that that he was the father figure back then. Yeah. No, you, you you felt so bad letting him down because he trusted you as a man and gave you so much confidence. Like there weren't that many rules. He didn't have a huge, but we knew what the rules were. Uh -huh. You didn't want to let him down. All right, so let's uh, bring it back to the beginning, only about 